Well, good morning, everybody. Hey, Pastor Pat Rankin. I am with Pastor Aaron Kofer. We are at the farm, and you are on Overcomer Hour. Thank you for being on the show today. Uh, I pray that you guys have a great morning, and also I'd ask you to please like and share the show. Get some friends on and uh, send up your prayer requests. We're going to be going through the prayer um, prayer wall, the Have I Will Travel prayer wall. It's, uh, is it HBWT at dot org prayer? and then go to connect. Oh, you go to connect. I yep. thought you went straight to like prayer wall. Uh, you that. probably could. Uh, that, that was just, uh, once you get to our website. So let me see. Yeah. So get on the, uh, prayer wall, send us up your, uh, prayers and love to pray for you. you got a great show for you today talking about a lot of the things that we been doing this summer. <clears throat> and like to hear from you. What are you guys doing this summer? What's uh, got your time? What's got your attention? And how is your family doing? So we'll start off like we always do with prayer. And I want to give a shout out to uh, my friend Mike and Donna who are watching the show this morning. Thank you guys for being on the show. Uh, let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for this day. Thank you for the sunshine being out, Lord God, and you've uh, watered the earth, and uh, we're expecting and believing that the crops are going to grow. We have a great harvest, and just ask, Lord God, that you would lead, guide, and direct us through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, let's see who's on the show today. Let's see, let's see, let's see. We got uh, Mary Van Griff's on the show. Good morning to you. Kelly Stanford's on the show. Jeanette Ackerson, we we're just reading your prayer request. And Mary Van Griff, Chuck Sherbring, Sue Davidson, thank you for being on the show. Uh, Mike Madelone, I need a prayer for my wife, Angela. She has caught some kind of stomach bug mm. and has her in a lot of pain. Um, uh, Mike Madelone, okay, Terry Burek is on the show as well. Thank you, Terry, for being on the show. Let's go to... Uh, for you guys, get on the prayer wall at Have Bible Will Travel. Get on the website and to get on the prayer wall site and uh, deposit or lift up your prayers. Uh, and we will announce them. Paul Hall, hey, just want to give you a quick uh, shout out to all you people out there in the Westplex. We are having uh, service tonight out at Montgomery, dinner at 6, uh, service at 7. <clears throat> Special surprise for you guys. Uh, my daughter's in town, and she will be singing a couple of songs, worship songs, with, with Jess. Uh, so that's going to be super cool. So if you're out there in that area, like to hear some good worship, want to hear a good word, uh, come on out. Got a lot of stuff. Debbie Jeffries, Bill Jeffries, thank you for being on the show. Barb Sheehan on there, too. Um uh, Mickey Head is on the show. Becca Law is on the show. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being on the show. Let's go over to the prayer wall. We'll go through it together and just kind of talk about some of the things that are out there and uh, get them lifted up in prayer. I've seen a couple of them this morning. Aunt Jen has a cousin who has cancer, mm -hmm. and uh, she's in need of um some healing and they they have a bill that's three thousand dollars a month which is ridiculous um yeah i heard somebody say hey you know they gave the COVID out COVID shot out free surely they can give out all these drugs oh, for, for cancer free i'm not quite sure has anybody ever thought about that what the why they'll give away a shot that's supposed to be life-saving but they they charging you your insurance company for are you for cancer treatment that's a that's a whole other sore subject uh, or even the diabetes shots for di people with diabetes yeah. through the roof yeah i um yeah i went through this with my dad it's a that's a it's just a it's a it's a it's a system let me just say this to be nice it's a system that needs to be reworked mm -hmm. we need need some new leadership in there so anyways we'll lift up your cousin uh aunt jen <clears throat> for sure uh and jeanette uh Jeanette Ackerson is really doing good with the shoulder. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, she's probably way ahead of schedule, in my personal opinion, just by seeing the way she's moving. That's great. Uh, Josh Stubervish got cousins for Sky for healing uh, and prayers prayers for the veterans. Um, let's see. We got prayers, anonymous prayers. Please pray for God to heal and restore my body, soul, and preferences and desires. Um, okay, good. 
praying for Mary Van Grift and her family with the loss of Slingshot. Obviously, we continue to lift that up and lift up the uh, lift up the family. Uh, sister and Aunt Jen has a sister-in-law with stage four pancreatic cancer. Lifting that up, we've been getting a lot of these stomach cancer things, so we're lifting that up in prayer. Uh, Debbie Arisman does. We got your prayer request, and uh, we got. Uh, uh, some some decent news out of that that prayer request and just praying that God like I know he will fill the rest of it and get the things done that need to get done there for your healing Debbie Julia West let's see Julia West she needs prayers for her friend Vivian uh, with congestive heart failure we'll lift that up uh, we need to lift up Chris who has a tumor uh, praying for that Terry Bierick, uh is praying for Mr. and Mrs. Cope uh, and you guys can probably hear our cat in the background. He's he's up on the loft, <laughs> and I actually uh, would you freak out if he look where he's at if he just jumps on the table. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> if the, if a cat jumps down on our table, guys, we got to apologize. We took his ladder away oh, yeah. just for optics in the background, and uh, it looks like he's getting ready to jump. <laughs> yep, I had a feeling. There you go. So he's down. Uh Let's see, Kelly Naismith, we're lifting her up and her friend, uh, Mary Kay's dad, who had a stent put in, and I've been I've prayed for that. Uh, back to this, I'm sorry guys, for Terry Bierk wants to lift up Mr. and Mrs. Cope for his eyesight, uh, and Mrs. Cope for her upcoming stress test. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephen Hawkin, we're praying for Kelly Naismith, and also Kelly Naismith, yeah. I think she was diagnosed with pneumonia, right? Pneumonia and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, head cold or something like that. Yeah, the science infection. Yeah, science yeah. infection. <clears throat> and uh, I want to pray for me and Pastor Aaron's horse out there. He needs some prayer for healing. He got a he got a wound on his backside. Um, I just saw uh, uh, pray for Mike Keller. His uh, mom died yesterday. Oh, that's a shame. I'm sorry to hear about that, Mike. That's always hard to lose a fan, uh, a mom or dad. Mark Moss is on, Mary Ann P is on, Deanna Fletcher's on. She needs prayers for a friend who lost her husband and is struggling. Uh, Melissa Grindell, good morning to you, Melissa, and your husband. Good morning, good morning. Kelly Stanford says, please pray for some prayers for safe travels to Kentucky. Uh, sister service. Jimmy's sister service. Yeah, yeah, so we are. We'll lift you guys up, and uh, we're sorry about your loss there. Uh, Jeanette's had needing prayers for cataract surgery. Uh, Lynn uh, Ayers is praying for nephew uh, who needs some help. And Tammy Roberts uh, needs a place to stay. Chuck Shearbring praying for his brother Jim. We've been praying for that too. So we're lifting that up to you, Lord, today. And uh, Diane Hampson for her son, son Steve. Um, so Pastor Aaron, if you would do that, uh, mm -hmm. lift all these up and let's see anything else that came in. Uh, I did want to also, uh, put Karen Lining down on there. Uh, I think you mentioned Debbie Rismendez and, uh, Pastor Ferguson and the, the Ridley family with, mm -hmm. with, uh, their healing they need. So, uh, again, guys, if you got anything, go ahead and keep, uh, bringing them in, but we're going to lift these up that we got, uh, down here, uh, on, for prayer. So Lord, I just want to pray for all these different prayer requests and, uh, Lord, you see all the names and all the different situations. And, Lord, we just pray for your mighty healing hand to be upon all of them. And, Lord, we're going to stand in agreement with all these people and all these families and uh, claim victory in all these situations. And, uh, Lord, we thank you that uh, we can come to you and uh, know that uh, you hear our prayers and heal these prayers. Uh, pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Uh, Gloria Metzger is on. Please pray for my friends, family, and friends. She recently passed tragically. Oh, my goodness. Um, and Mary Van Griff. Um, bum, 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 bum. Okay, we'll lift that up. Gloria, Lord, we just want to lift up Gloria's prayer to you. Uh, with the passing of this uh, friend or family member, whatever it is, Lord, just in this, this horrible situation. We lift up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, so I'm going to have Pastor Aaron talk a little bit about uh, pre, let's see, talk a little bit about parade pre, post, and then fair uh, 
um, so we're in the middle of it, so I can't say pre or post, so it's right in the middle. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the parade that we did out in Lincoln County, uh, what's all going on out there, and your experiences for our first night in the Have Bible Will Travel booth. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're obviously, we have uh, new locations. Well, we've been out at Moscow for about a year and a half, and uh, we just are opening up our uh, Montgomery City ones with Wednesday nights that we're doing right now and uh, Sundays uh, to follow here soon. Uh, so obviously it was it was natural for us to want to get in the Lincoln County Fair. We're in the Montgomery County Fair next week. We're in the Bellflower Parade right down the road here uh, on 4th of July. Uh, so the, the pre-parade w- was awesome. So basically if you've never been part of the Lincoln County Fair, I had never been part of it. I don't know if Pastor Pat had uh, the parade anyways, it was just huge. It was <coughs> the biggest parade I've ever been to. Um, and we got down there at about four o'clock and there was hundreds of floats slash displays, uh, set up. And, um, you know, we got to go down there. We we're down there for an hour or two, uh, with our float, got to talk to a lot of people. We had the Robbins family out there, the Tucker family out there, uh, Pastor Mark out there, myself, uh, my family, Pastor Pat, and I may be missing a couple more, but it was just awesome, just a fellowship. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were roping, we were uh, passing out flyers. De- the kids decorated the float, which it looked awesome. Uh, then we got to go in the parade, which I think, I bet, would you say thousands of people? Oh there was thousands of people lined up uh, in the streets of Troy and uh, got to pass out candy, passed out probably, was it 500? I, don't, I asked the girls how much that... that book of cards yeah. was it i don't know it was hundreds for sure yeah it had to be four or five hundred business cards and, and the kids just did a great job wonderful uh, uh becky Ro- uh, becky robbins did a great job and uh, everybody just did awesome it was great to go through there got to see the people and like i was telling pastor pat you know every uh we've got a big banner on our float and every person we went by you could see their lips saying have bible will travel so for sure everybody knows who have bible will travel is now out here in lincoln county um, and that, that probably went for an hour and a half, two hours going through the streets. It was, it was one of the best experiences I've had, um, here at Have Bible, just to be able to be out there amongst the people and, and sharing the love of Christ, sharing, uh, who our church, our church is and, and who we stand for. And, um, and then last night, the Lincoln County Fair, uh, kicked <coughs> off. So it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, we have a booth out there from five to 10 every, every night. Saturday is noon to eight. Uh, but myself, Pastor Pat, Jimmy Robbins, the Dennises, um, uh, Angie was out there uh, from Moscow. There was a couple other people out there and just hundreds, again, hundreds of people just walking by the booth and got to talk to, to lots and lots of people. And, and that's what we need to be doing. That's what the church should be doing. We're doing it to be out there to build community, uh, to, to make friends in the community and just to share the love of Christ in the community. That's what we should be doing. That's what God's church was designed to do. And um, I I made a lot of contacts, as did Pastor Pat and Jimmy and and all the rest of those people out there. Uh, We had the big, I don't even know what you call it, nose that that Pastor Mark made where the kids come up. That's a draw in itself. Just the kids to see that big nose up there. You get to go up there and stick your hand up there and either get candy or some, um, what do you call it? Silly string. And the kids just absolutely love it. And while the kids are doing that, it's a perfect opportunity to go up and talk to mom and dad, give them a flyer, tell them about our new location in Montgomery, tell them about our location in Moscow, um, bracelets. We got bracelets. The fans, I'm sure we'll be passing a bunch of those out uh, the rest of this week. Everybody's going to want to be it's having a get, fan. It's going to get steamy. It, it does not, guys. It, I told my wife um, when we were at the Bellflower uh, Little Fair uh, I said, this is, it doesn't get any better than this. It's, it's out there it's with low, the people, low hanging, low fruit. hanging fruit, building relationships, building bridges. And it's, it's some of the best time I've ever had, uh, uh, being a part of have Bible will travel. I mm-hmm. love it. And it's just going to get better, bigger and better as this week goes on. And then next week with, uh, Montgomery city. Mm-hmm. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the experience. I'll just tell you some uh, of my experiences. And uh, I, I walked around and I and I met some people. I walked around. I met some, you know, some young man selling the four wheelers across the way from us. 
uh, met a guy who had a, a booth out there, a Trump booth out there. He had a great big truck out there. That was kind of cool. I met the Gideons and talked with the, mm-hmm. those guys who were handing out Bibles um, and uh, some of the other people that had booths around us. Um, the The neat thing that I found out about being out there was not just talking to the people, you know, that came by, but just being around people who like being at county mm-hmm. fairs. It was just a neat experience. It was uh, low stress, great vibe, mm-hmm. very just kind of subdued, calm, just a, a real, but but also at the same time a little energetic. It was kind of mm-hmm. it was kind of neat. <clears throat> and our booth is actually. Uh, in a covered covered barn uh, with poured concrete mm-hmm. on it, so I mean that booth we're at. Awesome. I mean it's just man, I I would have never dreamed being mm-hmm. in something that nice. And it's it, right in the center where people this, kind of walk a, through. Ma- it's the main gate. <clears throat> yeah, main gate. Yeah. yeah, so you're right there by the main gate, and I just I just think it was a uh, it was just a godsend. You know, I just really enjoyed just kind of hanging out and and passing out some cards and. And doing that, and uh, had a had a, a lemonade and a sweet tea. Man, that was really good. Um, I'm looking forward to the the rest of the week, and then uh, also going up there uh, with my family um, mm-hmm. this weekend. Um, so it's just kind of cool. It's a cool time just to be hanging out and be part of what God's doing. So, uh, so yesterday you were kind of the front man on all that stuff you and mark dennis and and jimmy what what was some of the experiences let let's see some of the highs and lows that you experienced with the people is there you know was there anything really silly really funny or what did anybody really come against you or anything no no can you talk about some of that yeah so obviously out here west the 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 uh the view towards god's church is obviously a little different than you know if you go at other places in the around the area it, everybody's very very receptive you know i i never i was handing out um our little pamphlets to, to people telling them where those our church are, was those are awesome they're great shelby did a great job yeah, on those them. are awesome um and everybody's just very receptive oh thank you know and you know i didn't get up in their space i just hey would love to invite you to our church and then you know a lot of them say oh well what's your church about and you know this and this and this and got to build relationships and you know what? And another highlight for me was obviously my son's there. He's twelve, so he's just getting into that age where you can run around. You run around, and and you you saw teenagers and kids being kids, big time. And and that's that's what I love. It was raining there the first part of it. They didn't care. They're out there in the rain. They're in their muck boots, getting muddy. And it's it's it showed me that there's still hope for America. When you oh, see man. small, and I I don't know if you can call Troy small town town America mm, anymore, but, not re- but really. But it's, it's, you know, all the kids there were in FFA and uh, 4-H were showing their swine, showing their cows, showing their chickens. And, um, man, this is, this is, this and is they awesome. Got, they got a lot of, they got a lot of, they got even livestock shows in yeah, there, which. Yeah, big time. I didn't, I didn't <coughs> even get a you, to go Usually, <coughs> excuse me, usually when, um, <clears throat> sometimes when these fairs get less uh, attraction, they start dumping rodeo events yep, and stuff yep. like that. That's not the way it is at Troy. Yeah, it's just right. growing. It's growing. just massive. I mean, they got, I think somebody said they're doing barrels. I think they're doing the uh, uh, ranch rodeo. Ranch rodeo, yeah. <clears throat> Man, you want, I'm telling you, it, it's, it, if I was going to sign off on anything, I, I'm sure I'll be able to sign off on the Montgomery Fair because I've been to it a bunch, but that Troy Fair, it's popping. Yeah. You, if you guys, if for you moms or, you know whatever. What time is it open during the day? Uh, I'd have to look. I know in the, the afternoon. Yeah, three. Uh, I'd have to look, but I know like the rides and all that. They open at seven o'clock. Um, in in the evening. In the evening. That's what time they opened yesterday. And um, you know, and and as far they've they had security everywhere. You know, I thought oh, that, they they've gosh. got it everywhere. There's... So moms and dads that that got kids. You know, like Jess and I have uh, Brock and Sadie. I felt completely safe. You can't get out. You can't get no, out of the, you, you can't. can't get out of the place without going through the that, gate. That's right. 
So, so I, I mean, if I mean, if something was really weird, it, it would. Yeah. They they got an eyeball on that. They got they got sh the sheriff's yep, department yep. out there. They got backup out there. Firefighters, ambulance. All them everybody. cops are on four wheelers, and like you said, it's it's just one of those fairs where everybody knows, hey, I'm here and I'm having a good time. It's a, you know. Obviously, you got to watch your kids, but man, yeah. if you're talking about a real nice venue, family oriented, oh, that's man. it, man. Yep. I, you could, I, I think they call it a season pass. You yeah. got a season pass where you could seventy dollars, I think, for the whole week. For the whole week, which yep. is which is crazy. That would be another whatever five days or something. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and you get to ride the rides in there. So, uh, and I thought, <clears throat> I thought the booths were reasonable. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I got yeah. I got an iced tea that was. You know, it was yay tall and that big around. I'm sure it was 20 or 24 ounces of tea or whatever, and I, it was six bucks. Yeah, I didn't think yeah. that was that bad. So, I thought I thought everything kind of was good. You know, if I had a young family, well, I'm taking my family up there Saturday, and we're gonna we're gonna really spend some time up there. So, I'm excited about it. Um, you know, and I don't have a horse in the race. You know, out there, I just think it's a neat environment, and yeah. we're blessed, like Aaron said, to have a church in, in Moscow and a church in Montgomery yep. it, and it and it fits right in that right. wheelhouse there so be thinking about that if there's something you guys you know you're looking for something for your kids to do and you pack up <clears throat> um, it'd be a great place you you may want to make sure you you park in the right spot oh it, yeah I think the next couple of days it ain't getting any much better the, uh, the obviously the parking lots of field like all the uh, county fairs are but it it was just it turned into a garden i mean <laughs> literally garden i i don't know where they're going to park people or if they'll, they'll bring gravel they're be doing in. some gra yeah grading a bit they're yeah. gonna have to do some gravel or something yeah. in there to to help get that right i guess i yeah. don't know yeah. but anyways there you go let's look at some of the comments here and tell me what you think about some of the county fairs you've been to so jimmy robbins did a good job and smiles on kids faces uh, when they got snotted with the silly stream was the best part for me. That was awesome. Tammy Shipley's on. Good morning, Marianne. Peace is my daughter was 20 something and all the city girl, uh, all the city girl took her to Lincoln County Fair and she saw the 4-H box on the animals started yelling, Hey mom, it's a Irish pig. I laughed. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody out here is, you know, all the kids are all part of the 4-H and mm -hmm. FFA, uh, which is which I think is just phenomenal. I, I can't think of anything better your kids ought to get into than agriculture or livestock or being outside or if not getting into the trade, at least learning mm -hmm. about it and coming out and hearing about it. Yep. And I just thought it was wholesome. I just thought it was, you know, and, 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 and it's a neat, it's a neat release. It's like a mini vacation for, for people who live in the city get to come oh, out but, there and go to that and then they can come back home yeah. and, and just enjoy it. You don't have to own any of it. So it's kind of a twofold experience, you know, you get to, um, see all that wonderful stuff. So, did, uh, did you mention any of the, any of the, was there any real highlights, uh, that you've seen, like any real family that you got to witness to, or that was really interested in it more, yeah, actually, more than another? Uh, yeah, there's actually, you know, quite a few people that we got to build relationships with, but one really stuck out. Um, it was the one that had that young man that was in the wheelchair, uh, got to speak to that family and, you know, and she was, uh, involved. They're all involved in 4-H. Uh, for a while and got to speak to them for a little while because I'm thinking about putting Brock and Sadie in it. But uh, we really got to start talking about church and, and her upbringing in church. And, um, you know, they asked us, you know, is your Moscow one uh, handicap accessible? Yes, it is. This, this. And um, that that one really stuck out because you could tell they they are really looking for a church that's that's accepting to um their their son yeah, and, special and needs yeah people. special needs that yeah, you know unfortunately they said they got you know hurt a couple places with different things but yeah you know so if you've got a family and you're like hey we got enough money to do one big thing this summer so i'd sad. take them to a fair for sure so county sad. fair terry Birk said that was our second second day. day hey you can't beat that yeah so that you know that's kind of stuff me and vicky went to when we was first dating and everything so i kind of pulled her out of her world she's like oh my gosh what the heck is this you know uh, but I'm with you on that. You know, a lot of times with special needs people, it's it's hard for them to get adjusted because they just don't know right. what type of uh, um, setting you have for for the child. Right. You know, and that's actually how Wild Man came. His mm -hmm. uh, his dad came, and I was in boxing. I was boxing. I seen a guy at the door, and I walked over to him, and he said, "Hey, man, did my son come? You know, he's special needs, and he has a wheelchair or whatever." And I said, "Yeah." I said, uh, 
I said, I, that's not a problem. I think everything everything at Westport's all ground floor. Every, so. Everything at all our locations is handicap, handicap accessible. Good. All of us, have, they all have ramps. Good, yeah. So I, I've never, I, I don't know, you know, I can't speak for the handicapped people who do come, but as far as I know, everybody's always felt very welcoming and, and actually both entrances. Uh, yeah, so I just, good, good. That's awesome. So, yeah, anyways, uh, so that that's really what it is, you know. And I, and I hate to overdo it by talking about it, but that really is where you need to be. It, and that it, wherever your church, their context is, wherever those people are, and maybe it's not county fairs, maybe it's in the city, or maybe it's wherever. Wherever you're you building community. Yeah, you need to be there building some community and just, you know, and I, and I thought about that last night. I, I've done this so many times, been out uh, witnessing, um, and, and I just, it was such a great fit. Mm -hmm. And I just really loved just going out there and, and, and telling people about Jesus. It was it was wonderful. So we're kind of taking Jesus to the streets and taking Jesus to the uh, uh, to the rural area as well. So what say you? Uh, what are you guys doing? What's got your time this summer? What are you guys planning on doing for fun with your family? Um, and to continue to send up your prayer requests. I'm going to go through this list in, the, uh, in our bulletin, and then we're going to get into Matthew chapter 5 and continue on a little bit. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit, if you can, I'm sure you remember, what you're preaching on uh, in Moscow, anything that you were talking about. You had a big crowd out there yep. Sunday morning, so you want to talk about that a little bit before I delve into this? Yeah, absolutely. So we um, we had a big crowd out there, uh, and I was basically, I took a little from what Pastor Pat had preached about uh, out of Hebrews last Wednesday out at Montgomery City, uh, talking about faith. And then I kind of went into, uh, there's two places in the Bible where, where Jesus is marveled by somebody's faith. Yeah. And um, one is the centurion's faith where he had faith, and the other was the lack of faith that his own hometown uh, had shown him. So it, it, the, I think the, pe the, the people there really got to see, you know, I'm, I'm going to, Jesus is going to be marveled in my, at my life one way or another. It is my, my faith that I have that he's moving in my life and he can take care of all the situations or the lack of faith that, mm. that I may have in my life. That um, And, and here, here's the thing that I told the church. if I, I want to marvel Jesus because of all the faith that I got. I don't want to, he got me this far, why am I going to doubt him now? So uh, the same thing, and I think a lot of people related. I got a lot of people coming up and talking to me about their faith walk uh, with Christ afterwards. So it, it was great. It was awesome. The uh, <clears throat> some decorating days. I'm going through a bulletin for a couple minutes here, guys, and we'll get you enough time to get in our study here. So we're going to have about a half hour of study, probably. Um, so de uh, VBS decorate days for all you guys who want to come up during the day is today it starts at 10 a.m. and goes to 8 p.m. Uh, shout out to Stephanie. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephanie, I guess uh, so. Be uh, Peth now. Yes. Stephanie why Peth. did Why did I forget her name? Stephanie. Peth, Stephanie Peth. Wow. Yeah, fireworks going behind us. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. We're just taking a look here. Prayers for my children, my home situation, transportation. All right, Lord, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus for Roxanne and her situation and transportation. We lift up to her, Lord, and and Lord, I got another prayer request out there um, that you you mend these hearts that are that are uh, in need of mending out there um, in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go back to this. Sorry about that. So VBS decorating days today, 10 a.m. to 8 a.m. Thursday, 5 to 8, Friday, 10 to 4, and then Sunday, 10 a.m. after church, which is always super, super cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I guess it's, it's starting would Monday. be that Monday, mm -hmm. which is, what was that date? It's uh, the 15th. 15th. So what it says, 6 p.m. So be part of VBS um, there's all kinds of stuff here, guys. I'm not going to go down the list. It, it's a bunch. Um, there's slip and slide and there's the garage. Oh, the garage is coming up is for the guys, uh, August, August 5th. 5th. So it's hard to believe we're buzzing through. So I came, when I came in last night through, to, uh, from the fair, I was coming, I've been seeing so many deer so early. Oh, buddy. It, I mean, I, they're everywhere. everywhere. So the deer population, obviously in the county, is just blown up. But out here in the rural areas, is really coming up just mm -hmm. crazy amount. I I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't just go off and hand out permits this year. This is the most deer I've seen this early in July. Right? I mean, I'm thinking about. about it. So I seen, oh, in my my field over my hay field over here, I seen a bunch of deer over here, and um, 
Well, I think like, that has a lot to do with it. I think all the rain is helping these crops pop up, and I think these these deer are getting up. They're in all these over it, and they're running across the field. And I was like, man, this is July. And I go, what the heck is going on? Yep. And 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 coming in back through the back on Truxton, they're jumping all jumping over the road up. there. I was like, holy cow. Yep. yep. Um. So, anyways, it's all good, guys. Um. Let's get into. Uh, so I want to announce again tonight, uh, so we got uh, service, uh, dinner at 6, uh, and uh, service at 7. Uh, my daughter Keelan's in town, and she will be doing a special uh, set uh, with Jessica out there in Montgomery. That Do, place is popping already. Do, doing we have, a couple, what, three services? <laughs> yeah, doing a couple worship songs. Yeah, tonight ought to really be oh, popping. Man. So if you guys uh, know anybody living out in this area in the Westplex, come on out. Uh, we got some good word. We got a good uh, praise good food, team. Good praise team. Yeah, and great food. We're going to barbecue, so we're going to be singing and shouting. And, and uh, uh, Gary says, same out at our property. Mandy Garcia says, I see deer everywhere. I'm seeing deer carcasses on the side of the road like it's like it's a rut. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's really um, abnormal. That's it's it's pretty dang abnormal to see this many deer in July, in my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, well, praise God for all that, and, and praise God for Missouri Conservation. They they got to be second to nobody in conservation. I think everybody from all over the country comes here to to fish. I know. Mm -hmm. I mean, they fish yep. the streams and the and lakes turkey and, hunt. and turkey hunt, and obviously the, the abundance of deer is is just crazy. But uh, also, I guess these high high level of waters, these creeks rising up, are probably pushing them yeah. more so, than the woods. So, anyways, uh, let's look at what Tim Staples says, and then we'll get into it. Since my car was shaking up, I've been through a lot uh, of issues. I'm uh, dredging along through what happened. Uh, I think he said he hit a deer with it. Oh, Lord, we just want to pray for our brother Tim right now in the name of Jesus and, and help him through his his needs. And... Uh, just be with them, be with the rest of us, and uh, lead us with your Holy Spirit, Father God, to um, do this Bible study and that, uh, that the, the people enjoy it and have a good time with it. And uh, lifting up my buddy Mike Sr. today, mm -hmm. in uh, Jesus' name, amen. amen. So a quick shout out to you guys as we get into Matthew chapter 5, and I'll pick up and just first... Oh, let's pick up in verse 21 where Jesus starts talking about anger. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll start to read it. I'm reading out of King James today. It says, For you've heard that it was said uh, by them of old, Thou shalt not kill, and whatsoever, uh, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. <laughs> But I say unto you that whoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of judgment, and whoever shall say to his brother Raka uh, shall be in danger of the council. Now, I want to stop right here and talk about this because I was reading this a little bit this morning. Um, Raka, obviously, when, if you're reading in King James, is a Hebrew word for fool. Um, so in this... In this text, when it's talking about, you know, the, the commandment, thou shalt shall not kill, Jesus is saying, if you harbor that thought in your heart, you're as guilty as a, as a man who does that. Yeah. So what he's saying here in this, in this text is, I judge the heart, I know the heart, uh, I know what uh, you're thinking. Uh, I know what's um, acceptable and what's not. So let me talk to you guys just a little bit and then we'll move on from this this here about all the situations you got going on in your life. And, and then you say, well, I didn't, you know, I didn't hit them or I didn't give them the finger or I didn't tell them off. You know, your heart you know, like if, if somebody says, hey, you know what? My heart's not in it. That's a true statement. So the, yeah. the, the heart is like the lamp or the furnace that gets everything else going. Mm -hmm. Pro or con. So it, it can get you emotional. It can steady you or it can make you retreat. So Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yeah. So God knows what's in your heart. So there's a lot of times when 
I'll pause during the day just to kind of get my heart right and get heart smart and, and, and not act off of emotion. Now, I'm not saying emotions is a bad thing. You can't be led uh, into bad decision making by your emotions. Can your, can your heart trigger your emotion to get excited about something? I think it can, and I think that's a good thing. But you got to be careful when you're emotional and mm. you're not thinking with your heart or thinking with your head. So, absolutely, uh, God knows what's going on inside your heart. Um, you know, there's sometimes, even when we don't say it, it can become even worse. A lot of times, people get quiet when they're mad at somebody, and that that anger builds. Um, can Can you talk about? Um, can you talk about? just your experiences of, of watching or helping or counseling people who, who've never dealt with just a, 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 an anger issue, just right up, right up front, you know, just, can you talk about uh, how you seen that, that, that ended up manifesting in their life for the bad? Yeah. It's, you know, obviously when you've got anger or, or harbor anger in your heart, like Pastor Pat was saying, that that's where it, it starts. And I think when when you're allowing stuff like that uh, to just remain there, it, it manifests throughout your whole day, the way you speak, the way you act, the way you present yourself. And people, for the most part, people can read that on people a mile away. You know, you, you can see that, uh, those emotions coming out uh, through their, again, through their actions, the way they speak. So when people harbor that anger, all they're doing is they're just creating a, a ball of fire that's just waiting to unload on somebody. And a lot of times, let's be honest, it's the people that are closest to us because we, for sure. we think they're, you know, well, I can unload on my wire for my husband or my, and you usually what, do yeah, because they're not going to go anywhere. They're going to love me anyways. Mm -hmm. And, and that's why, you know, I, I told the church this week, you got to take every thought captive because you need to think about what, what's about to come through your mind. Does it, does it glorify God? Does it make sense? That's something Pastor Pat taught me a long time ago. Does it glorify God? And does it make sense? Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, you got to get rid of it because if you allow that to manifest, whether through your, your actions or through your speech, you can create a whole another whirlwind. And now your, your one problem turned into three and, and, and so forth. So oh, they just build up. Oh, each other. but man, it's, I mean, it's just building. You can get just nasty. You got to be careful about that. Let, let's just pray about that. And I want to talk to you about do a little life coaching again here for a second. So Lord, we just pray for that. Uh, um, just the anger, may, maybe it's never been dealt with, Lord, with anybody. I just pray for that and, and just help us get that uh, done and, and get it out of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Because we don't want it to turn to bitterness, uh, and you know that. So so let me let me bring, bring something to you that's going to help you. So when you're dealing with somebody or something or you'd like to talk to them, Timing, delivery, and volume yep. are the three things that you're going to need to know on how to to do to do this. And and you can do that. You can. I I believe you can. I can talk to anyone as long as I got these three in line: mm -hmm. timing, delivery, and volume. So let me tell you about this. So if I wanted to talk to you um, about the death of your grandma, um, I have to be careful how I approach that. Uh, and how I deliver that and, and how my volume is. So the wrong way would be, aren't you over your grandma yet? Are you kidding me? My, I, my dog died. I understand what you're going through. So that, that, is, that is the ultimate form of... Like a slap in the face. I'm yeah, I was trying to figure out yeah. what to say. <laughs> it's like a, it, not, not a slap in the face, like a, a, a palm strike to the nose. <laughs> I mean, it, it, that was wrong at every level. So if I was <clears throat> life coaching or... I'm 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 evaluating a, a somebody speaking. I would give them an F on that report right, card. Right. First of all, that it's not done in love. Uh, the timing or the grandma just died yesterday, so I I got to rethink everything. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you know on on like a death, I'm just using death of a grandma. It's a death of a grandma. I may just come over and just sit with somebody for a while, or I may just sit around or stand around or something. You don't always have to have the answer. Right. And then if I am going to speak. Uh, I'm going to make sure uh, that the delivery is correct and it's not condescending but helpful. Mm -hmm. And then the volume. It doesn't, when you're dealing with something that tender, uh, it doesn't, the volume doesn't need to be up. You no, just no. kind of be really uh, very quiet. And there's a time when you adjust that, you know, maybe 
we used to call it having your inside voice, have your inside voice on and say, hey, you know what? I heard about your grandma, man. If there's anything I can do to help you, I'd be more than happy to. I, I can't imagine, and, and then I always throw this in, I can't imagine what you're going through. Right. Cause that's, it, it, and, yeah, and that's real. Amen. I agree and with that's that. That's just not a canned answer. Yep. I just, yep. I, you lost your grandma. I didn't, you know, yep. I mean, it's a, it's a new thing for you. I don't, right. I don't have any idea. Yeah, you're right. right. But when you come in and invade somebody's sacred space and you say, hey, I know how you feel, that that's just, that's, that's really not yeah. the best way. Right, right. Um, so timing and then delivery and, the, and then the volume. Obviously, the volume. So let me say this. I can meet with anybody and sit down and have these conversations just as long as I'm not disrespecting the person on the other side of the table. If you're disrespecting them, you've lost them. If the common ground is, is, is those three things, timing, delivery, and volume. So be thinking about that and, and remember that, and uh, it'll help you going forward, even in your relationship with... Uh, your husband or wife, which are probably the mo can be the the, the best yeah. or the most toxic. Yep. Yep. A lot of times they're toxic because um, you just have never gotten over the last thing you fought That's about. Right. Yeah. You carry, so you, you keep carrying it over and over yeah, and over, and you just keep carrying it into the next day of your life, and and that happens. You know, I mean, when you're living with another human being, that can happen. You know, it, so. Be careful on how you do that. So th these are all matters of the heart. So that's kind of why I'm spinning off here what Jesus said, you know, about killing somebody, right. actually killing somebody or actually killing somebody in the heart. And I think Jesus is wanting you to know, hey, man, that's 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 where this started is in the heart. Amen. You know, and you can do two things today. You can either build somebody up or you can break somebody down. And obviously Christ is is our example of building people up. There's enough negativity in the world. There's enough people, mm -hmm. you know, breaking people down we need to be that light and those the the uh people building people up you gotta use this thing okay yeah. uh, that's the biggest one okay yeah all right let's just do this we're gonna look at uh, uh let's see I'm trying to bring these up can you scroll yeah, up a little bit? we're not the most technical let's see here It's not a touch screen, huh? No. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I can't figure it out. Should be. All right. For all you guys, uh, let's see who's out there. Paul Butler's out there. Steve, y'all, message can be lost in the way we deliver. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jimmy Robinson, that means a lot. All right, so who, we, can't, we, we can't scroll to find out who was on there while we were talking, but uh, just keep the comments coming, and, and we'll, we'll try to... Uh, address these as we go so be thinking about those matters of the heart it's uh i actually could probably stay here and talk about this but i'm not going to um and i and i don't want to ever say get over it that that just that doesn't solve anything can i can I, let's just stay here for a second I, I don't don't just say get over it uh let's go back and see what everybody's saying so we can right. maybe address it uh if you can right, read it. right about there. Okay. Uh, so Roxanne said, uh, I have to ask Jesus to help me not right. want to say slash think bad things about my granddaughter's father. Uh, a lot of amens. Uh, Shell John says, I need this conversation topic today. Melissa uh, Grindel says, same. Um, Chrissy Gillette says, me too. Uh, Jimmy Robbins, that means a lot. When I lost my friend, a couple people came over, hugged me and prayed that with me. Wasn't ready to talk and it was perfect. So, uh, Colleen Wilson says, sometimes it's nice to lend a listening ear. And Paul, uh, Lynn Ayer says, that's exactly why texting can be so bad. No, you can't bad. hear delivery or the emotion. So, so, let, let me yeah. talk, to, let, me, let me, since we're there, since we're there, let's just go there and then we'll move on. That's not, guys, I, I and I've, I have people text me and, and that, and, and I get it. it it's okay. It's, I'm not, I'm not going to damn anybody for texting. Obviously, don't text while you drive, but don't think that the conversation goes correctly by you texting somebody. When I'm texting, uh, it's they're short, they're to the point. I would never try to carry on an oh, adult man. conversation no. through a text message. I just wouldn't do it. Don't do it. Don't subject yourself to it. If you are doing it, quit doing it. Um, here, you know, you're mad at me. I get it. Uh, can we talk tonight? Yeah. Uh, McDonald's will drink some coffee. That's that's what that is. Or I need a gallon of milk. Or 
uh, you know, Keelan's at the store. It, you know, I'll, I'll, or how about this? I'll call you after I get off work. Yeah. That's the other one. I'm at work. Quit. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Man, so here, here's there. here's what I tell people who have you know who have very normal jobs. They usually start at seven, get off at three, or start at eight, get off at four. Mm-hmm. I'm, I can talk to you uh, on the phone while before I go in. Then after that, you know, a lot of these times, some of you guys need to leave your phone in the car. Uh, and and not I know you go well I'll put it in my purse and I'll shut it off now you'll get it out so here's the deal like when I go to eat or something I put I keep it in the car um, and then at lunch if you got something that's pressing that hard talk to them at lunch and then you can talk to them on the drive home but the, but the texting thing well you know I, I just I don't I don't I'm not I'm not gonna sign off on that I don't I don't think that's I don't think that's good you know and I don't think it's good that you're taking your time at work. While you're doing stuff that can be handled when you get off work. That's right. I mean, let's look at it back when we was growing up, everybody. We didn't have text message. We didn't have cell phones. Everybody was fine. You know, if you had to make a phone call, you went home, you made a phone call, you got off the phone. But this, 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 I need, I need 19,000 things going on in my mind every second. That, that ain't right. It's, it's not right. We've got too much information. And, and then when some people, are telling you that they don't know about it, whatever's going on. You, they they know, but they've had so much more information download them, they forgot all about it. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm so I've never heard somebody say I'm so glad we figured that out over text. I've, I've never heard that. It's never going to happen. No. Um, pray for me and my family. Let's pray for Paul Butler. Lord, we just pray for my brother Paul. We just pray uh, you give him some help. Uh, whatever he needs, Lord, and uh, uh, just help his family, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mary Ann P says, "People at work on their phone." Yeah, I, yeah. There's, there's no way I could do that uh, back in the trade I was in. Keep losing the comments, beats. All right. Uh, so it's a heart issue. So we all know that. So, um, and that that all spun off of what Jesus said about. You know, hey, if you haven't killed anybody, but you thought about killing them in your heart, that's just, he, he's, he's meaning, he goes, that's not good. It's, it's not good. And, uh, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's go into 23. It says, therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, yeah, and, and, uh, and remember your brother has against you. Okay. Uh, so you got a gift you would like to bring to the altar. He says in 24, leave your gift before the altar and uh, go first and reconcile to mm-hmm. your brother and then come and offer your gift. So what he's saying is it's kind of like, it's kind of like the Lord's supper. You know, you need to have a, a clean hands and a pure heart before you take the Lord's supper. You can't be up there saying, Hey, I'm receiving you Lord. And, and you, right. the guy, and sitting, next, yeah, the guy sitting, sitting next to him, you're going, hey, I can't stand this yeah. guy. He's a jerk. You yep. know, it, it, it's just a, Here's what I have found out. Can I tell you this? Somebody could actually be checked out and still be present. You could you could say, well, I don't want to do this. You know, their heart could not be in it. Mm-hmm. And I'll be real honest with you. When God has, has released your heart, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty profound thing, you know. And uh, when somebody's heart's not in it, whatever it may be, they like that's, you said, they check out. It's done. It's that's, over. That's rough. Yep. That's that's where you need to. Uh, and I'd be careful how you address that. You know, don't take what I just said and, and run with it. Mm-hmm. But but just know that you're in a in a place that you're going to need some help. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have somebody in a relationship and their heart is checked out, uh, you you and you're trying to stay in that relationship, you you would probably need some some good Christian counseling. Yeah, it doesn't some, mean it can't come back around. It's yeah. just, well, it's, it's, it's it, and the reason some people's heart get there, whether they're, whether they fell out of love with church, they fell out of love with their spouse, they fell out of love with whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And they're Christians. They probably been feeding their heart. That's the wrong right, thing, the wrong, thing. wrong that's diet. Right. So, that's right. So t- be careful on that. Don't, don't uh, make some kind of knee jerk reaction. I, I see a lot of people, Lately. That that move on knee jerk reactions and it's horrible. Then they get to go. Oh man, I wish I wouldn't have said that. Or oh, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Or I wish I was like, man, I, you probably shouldn't have said anything. Mm-hmm. You know. And I got to think about that when I'm taking the Lord's Supper. I'm up there praying and preaching, and I'm going. You know, I have things in my life that that I, I don't want to harbor. You know. So 
you know. So you got heart checks are good to do. Absolutely. All right. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Let's move into this. Agree with your adversary quickly while you're in uh, in the way with him. Uh, at least any any time the adversary deliver you to the judge and the judge deliver you to the officer and you will be in prison. Verily I say to you, you shall by no means uh, come out thence till you have paid the uttermost uh, for the uttermost thing. Uh, so we kind of explain that, uh, how severe it is to have a heart that's just, just bitter. So and, hardened. And, and I would say, uh, let's just pray right now for everybody out there. Maybe this prayer would help that the, the hearts, Father, that are just a little bowed up, bound up, Lord, that you just free us up, Lord. Oh, we just, we just want to be free. We want to enjoy the sunshine today. Release us from all tension, Father, in the name of Jesus. Release us from all bitterness and anything that we have against one another in thy name. Uh, set us free today. Amen. Amen. So that that's uh, so I do that. Uh, I I do that when God tells me to do that. I'll sit sit aside and just go, you know what, I need to get right with God and talk to God. Um so don't don't think that taking a couple seconds and, and actually setting that aside to talk to God, it's very lucrative. Mm -hmm. And I think it's far different from people when they say, I talk to God all day. I, I don't doubt that you talk to God all day, but I don't know. What, what's your thoughts on I talk to God all day? Well, it's, it's the same as I can say, you know, I talk to my wife all day, but it can be, you know, that it's it, yeah, but you when know, you're it talking, can be gibberish or just, you know, stuff here and there. But when I actually sit down and have a meaningly talk with my wife, it's, it, it's completely different. Yeah. Different. Um, so, and that's it, that's it, like, if you would be talking to your wife during the day, I would be talking to my wife during the day, it's because you work with her, I work with my wife, and when me and my wife are talking, we're still husband and wife, but we're, we're, we're that mode too, you know, right. we, we have to get things done, yep. and I, I don't, you know, unfortunately, my wife probably wish I'd cut her a little more slack, but I, I probably don't cut her a whole bunch. And, and there's times throughout the day, which I know you and Vicki do too, like, wait a minute, we're, we're obviously not on the same page right now. Let's sit down. Let's both stop what we're doing. Let's sit down and get on the same page. That way we can get things accomplished. And that's the same thing when you're talking to the Lord. You know, you can you know talk to the Lord all day, but when you feel like, oh, uh, you know, God, which, which way do I'm going to go here? You need to stop, pause your day, have a reset, get in touch with the Lord, and really figure out how to go out about the rest yeah, of the Yeah, I believe that too. I, and I think, and I'm not doubting anybody's talking to the Lord on mm -hmm. that. I, I would right. never say you're not. I mean, that'd be crazy to yep. think that, but I'm, I'm just asking is, what, I mean, what are you saying? What are you hearing? Oh, how about this? What are you hearing? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. I just, I'm with you. I, um, you know, and I know everybody has jobs, you know, I don't know if you can step out or you go to the water cooler or something and just, and just that, here's what I'm saying, guys, just that pause where you're standing by the water cooler getting ready to drink your water just going god you know what i thank you that i got this time oh, but help me clear my head i want to get back to my desk and i just want to i i, I want you to know i don't want to harbor anything but love so yep, amen. there you go uh to close out the last let's let's just make it to about three minutes and we'll we'll do some of this so here we go um you've you've heard that it was said by them of the time of uh of old time, you shall not commit adultery, but I say unto you that who, uh, whosoever looks at a woman after, uh, looks at a woman with lust after lust. her has committed adultery with her already in the heart. So here we go again with the heart. So before it was anger, now it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's adultery or lust or whatever. It says, if, if your right eye offends you, pluck it out mm -hmm. and cast it from, uh, from you. Uh, for it's profitable for that one of your members should be should perish and not that your whole body should be cast into hell. So let, let me explain this real quick. So you're going to hear a lot of people that are that are Facebook jockeys. Oh, he, well, what kind of God tell you to pluck out your eye or cut off your hand or anything? It, this, this is speech to tell you how severe right. it, it would be to go to hell. So 
it would be better for you to go to heaven with one hand or one <laughs> eye than to burn with lust right. and and be the other way. That that's all it is, and I, I don't want to go ahead and get into all that. But he it says if your if your right hand offended you, cut it off and cast it from you, for it is profitable. Uh, for you, one of the members should perish, and not your the whole body. body. That's casting right. out. So he says it again. So he goes from the, you know, from the from the anger to the lust to the to the severity of it. You know, plug out your eye, cut off your hand, and and what he's saying is is we need to be take that very serious. And it's kind of like putting a band aid on a situation. You can put a band aid on it, but it's still there. Sometimes you got to take care of the, the the issue at hand and not just keep putting band aids on things. Yeah, so let, let's dive into this and, and make this clear. So um, it has been said that whoever shall put away his wife and let her give her willingly a divorcement. But I say unto you that whoever shall put away his wife, saving the cause uh, of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever shall marry her who is divorced commits adultery. So... Here's the first thing I want to tell you. Thank God that he forgives sin. That's mm -hmm. all I can tell you. Amen. Or we'd all be guilty of it. God hates divorce. Um, um, God hates sin. God has a remedy for all the above, and it's Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He can mend anything that's broke. He can fix anything that you don't think can be fixed. He can. He's, he's already thought about it. He's got a system. Um, it's called uh, surrendering self to God and, uh, and letting him come in. And uh, regenerate the heart. So, so maybe this Bible study is just, is really kind of about matters of the heart. And I think we could all use it because I think, it, especially in the summertime, where you're where you're bebopping around everywhere, you here, there, and everywhere, and you you could come across a lot of people like at the fair and really get yourself all oh, twisted yeah. up over what somebody said, you know, or um, you know, being next to a booth that mm -hmm. you don't agree with their mm -hmm. their ideology mm -hmm. you know it's you know you got to move on from that pray for him and and just go I'm, I'm here i'm here for my cause my cause is christ and you know and i told a friend about that situation i said i believe that god put us right next year for a reason i believe that our our witness and our words and our speech and our actions can change hearts yeah. you know the through the lord so I, I believe we're there for a reason yeah so uh, and obviously, everything's perspective. Yeah, and every, and it's obviously a situation because, um, you know, it it just is. There's good, there's evil, mm -hmm. there's light, there's darkness, mm -hmm. and there's there's good, and there's you know, there's there's right and there's wrong, and uh, and, and that's okay. We're 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 adults. We know uh, why we need God. Uh, we know how to get God, and uh, and let Him work in your heart. You know, right. if you, if you got into if I was to open up the book of James and really start getting into to heart issues, practical issues, mm -hmm. speech issues, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and we adhered to that word, we'd probably have a lot less fighting in the world if we would just, you know, be doers of the word and not just hearers yeah, only. Yeah. So James 1 and 2. Yeah, so be thinking about that going forward. So I guess uh, we'll title this Matters of the Heart, and yeah. uh, maybe that's what I'll talk about tonight. Um, so... Take this word, share it with somebody, and uh, and know you know Sermon on the Mount, man. It's it's pretty 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 beefy. So uh, again tonight, Montgomery Barbecue at six, uh, seven o'clock service. Don't forget about uh, us being in uh, the Lincoln County Fair, which is out in Troy at the fairgrounds. It's been there forever, and we hope to see you there. I'm Pastor Pat uh, with my co-host Pastor Aaron. I want to remember you two things. Jesus loves you and I love you. Have a, good Have a great day, day in the Lord. We'll see you guys. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.